and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're making coffee soap and the inspiration for today's soap is this fragrance from Wholesale Supplies Plus. It's vanilla hazelnut. Oh, it goes perfectly with coffee to me at least. All those scent notes together, mm, it's good. I made this soap last year and I loved it so much it's time to repeat it. Uh, this fragrance does have a good amount of vanillin in it or if you say vanillin, but I say vanillin. Um, which means this is gonna discolor to a really good chocolatey coffee brown. And we're gonna use that to our benefit today. So that's the fragrance, I'm making a double batch. I got a nice big bottle here to use up. Um, so let's talk about what the body of the soap. So I'm counting on this fragrance, turning that beautiful dark brown. I will pour off just a little bit of the soap batter and have it unfragranced so that it won't discolor. And I'll add a touch of titanium dioxide to make it look like a cream swirling in the coffee and do like a little cream dollop on top. That's how I did it last year and I just loved it. So I'm trying to duplicate that again. So in the body of the soap, I'm gonna use a coffee lye solution. And what I have here is some pre brewed coffee grounds. So I use a French press, I get organic uh, coffee beans, grind them, make a French press, and I save those beans, those grounds, they're not beans, they're grounds, um, and dry them out again. I just put them on some parchment paper in the oven on a low temperature until they dry. You can just leave them out to air dry. But the reason that I do that with pre-brewed grounds is because they won't get that little halo bleed out of coffee since they've already been brewed most of like the color is out of them and i think it makes them a little bit softer um, even though they're very dry it's not super gritty like a fresh ground coffee bean is um, this is just how i have liked to do it so these grounds are going in the main body of the coffee soap also just uh, we're going full-on coffee here and i will be using a heavy cream powder when i do my additives in the oils with my colloidal oats and my kale and clay and cream because i love cream in my coffee or sometimes i like coffee in my cream i like <laughs> i love a creamy coffee so that is what we're doing today it just smells warm and delicious to me and i can't wait to make this again i'm hoping it comes out as cute as last year's because i was in love with last year's we'll try let's get to it i've got to get some coffee brewed for my lye solution and get everything pulled out and let's come back and make some vanilla hazelnut coffee soap we are back for soap additives time i've got my heavy cream powder that's going in here for our coffee and cream theme I have my coffee grounds off to the side ready to go. My fragrance is off to the side ready to go since I'm not fragrancing the whole thing. And my titanium dioxide. And what I have here is pre-mixed. This is water soluble TD. And I do one part TD to two parts water. And that's what's in this little container here. And it's got some little ball bearing balls in there to keep it mixed up and fluid. So I like to have it pre-mixed, but you can definitely mix it one batch at a time. And titanium dioxide comes in both water soluble and oil soluble, or Nature's Garden has one that says it's both. So um, just make sure you know what you're working with and how to blend it properly. And that is that. So that'll go in our little cream topping. Let's get the dry ingredients in here and blend it up. And then we will get on to making soap. My coffee lye solution is off cooling to the side. back with my coffee lye solution and this was just a dark brewed french press coffee i didn't make it into ice cubes or anything i did cool it in the refrigerator so it was refrigerator cold and i added the lye kind of slowly and um it's fine it didn't volcano or do anything weird so here it is i did put um cane sugar and toss the silk fibers and sodium lactate in my lye pot. And this is very dark colored, but in soap without a discoloring fragrance, if I just made this and didn't fragrance it, it would not stay this dark color. It would be like a, a you know, like a tan or a darkish beige color. So it doesn't stay this dark coffee color all on its own. But of course that fragrance is gonna help it along, which is gonna be great. 
and that's why I need the titanium dioxide to make my cream for the top um, because I want it to be kind of white and creamy color. So we'll get this up to a nice emulsion and we'll pour off just a little bit for our cream portion. And then I will um, add my fragrance and my coffee grounds. Look at that gorgeous color. Mm. Smells like a coffee shop in the studio today and I am loving it. It's the next day. It's been about 24 hours and look at how scrumptious. I just lovely. I am so loving this. It looks edible, but it's not. This is soap. <laughs> um, the cream, this fragrance moved very slowly. It was a dream to work with and look at how dark and chocolatey coffee color it's already gotten and it will go even darker than that yet. And I want you to notice, although I did add titanium dioxide, this cream portion has the coffee lye solution and, and it is a nice creamy color, but it's not bright white. So this is a good example of the unfragranced color versus the fragranced color. I'm loving it. Let's get in here and see how those swirls came out. back with the lovely Olga and our first loaf to cut and let's just talk about the discoloration. So you can see the little rim around the outside here. There's the underside and the top color. So this is definitely gonna 
discolor to a nice, beautiful chocolatey coffee brown, which is what I was shooting for. But there you can see all the coffee grounds suspended. It's just lovely. It smells fabulous. I'm so tickled with this soap. I can't even, I'm just, I'm loving it so much. Um, and there's not gonna be a lot to see inside. I'm hoping that swirl comes out adorable. But let's see how it came out. So this fragrance was very slow moving. I blended for a long time to get it up to even a light trace to where I thought the swirl would come out and show, and there you go. Very delicate. So as this part discolors, this is gonna stay light. You can see how uh, light the top is and the inside, so it's going to turn a more um, ivory color and less beigey. So this will become more pronounced, and that is what I was going for, just a wisp. You know when you have a cup of coffee and you first pour the cream in and it leaves like a little wispy trail? That's what I was going for. I'm so happy. Okay. So it's very light right now. I thought I had gone, I did, I counted to four. I went four sweeps with the white. I'm surprised it's that slight, but I'm loving it. So the middle will be interesting to see, but I came in with my chopstick and did little swirlies. I wanted it to look like a spoon of cream on the top. I'm so happy with this. So yeah, the cream powder in the oils. So that is considered, when I put a milk powder or a cream powder in the oils, it is a milk and oil type, not a fluid milk, but a powdered milk. Um, and when you label, your soaps, if you put ingredient labels, um, you will list it as a milk, not necessarily a powder. So you will write like heavy cream, or you can write heavy cream powder, but this is a heavy cream. After it is mixed with the oils and the lye solution, it is a heavy cream, because powders are just dehydrated, you know, solidification versions of the liquid. So that is how you would label this in your list of ingredients. You go from greatest ingredient to least ingredient and you would put heavy cream in there on the scale of what you're adding. And I added the same amount as I did the colloidal oats and the kale and clay. So it's right on level with them. And that amount of cream powder or any milk powder, when I've added buttermilk powder, or if you have a goat milk powder, it really does lend a beautiful amount of creaminess to the lather. So don't feel like you're cutting short. It is a gorgeous lather, trust me. All right, here we go on the center loaf. And I just love how creamy the top. Let me talk about the slow trace and the top here. So the top is unfragranced. My recipe is a slow moving recipe. It's 50% liquid oils, 50% hard oils. So it is a really nice medium moving, it doesn't move too fast um, recipe, which is why I settled on it. After years and years of testing recipes, I came up with this percentage and it's what I've been really happy with. But all that being said, when I added the fragrance to the colored portion, so slow. This hazelnut or vanilla hazelnut really slowed down the trace. It would be a great fragrance for a really intricate pour. Okay, we got a little more of the white in here. <laughs> this is what more what I was thinking it would come out like. Um, anyway, this fragrance is fabulous, slow moving. You could do a super intricate design with this easily. Um, this was a very simple design, but also the top, just with my recipe, it was slow moving. So I had to blend and blend and blend <laughs> off of screen here to wait for this to come up to a sort of spoonable consistency to where I could kind of spoon it down on top and then do a little swirl. It took a while. I had to be patient. I got all my dishes done and my work surface cleaned up. I kind of like it when that happens because... I can't procrastinate on cleaning my soap area. When I'm waiting for something to firm up, it's like, okay, I've got to deal with the dishes. <laughs> I don't know if any of you all deal with procrastination. I have really purposed in my life to be very intentional, and so I try really hard not to procrastinate on things that I know need to be done. And a slow-moving soap batter really helps me. <laughs> this is one of those embrace the little things in life. So when I'm waiting for this to thicken up, I'm like, okay, I've got all those dishes to do. 
let's just go do the dishes and then they're done and I feel so good about it. So there's a tip. If life presents you with a pause and there's something you need to get to, just get to it and you'll feel so much better after it's done. Anyway, I am so happy with how this came out. It really does look like whipped cream dolloped on top. And again, I um, will be following up. This color is not even as dark as it's gonna get. It'll get even darker than this. So we're gonna watch a total transformation on the color here. All right, we are into our last loaf that I made on screen. I did make a double batch, so I have another batch to cut. And look at that top, it looks edible. <laughs> I love it. It's so scrumptious. And that's what I want. I want when you take a bar of soap into the shower or the bathtub or just by your sink. I wash my face with my soap every night. But I use any of the soaps that you've seen me make on here. If I have extra um, end slices or bars that don't look great, they end up in my bathroom and that is what I use to wash my face. So it's great for taking off makeup and all of that. I just love it. Well, all that being said about my own face care, <laughs> this would make a fabulous all over body bar. And the little bit of coffee grounds in here, because they were pre-brewed, <laughs> it's kind of a tongue twister, um, they don't have that aggressive exfoliating feel. They're a softer, a little bit rounded off. So it does have a little bit of an exfoliating, but it's not a super scrubby bar, which I actually prefer. I mean, there are times when I want a really grubby like loofah bar but for the most part this is very smooth it's going to be comfortable on your skin and um yeah so that is one of the reasons why and also because the little coffee grounds don't have halos around them and that is because they have been brewed and dehydrated so they don't have a lot of color to bleed out and i like that i like the little crisper look of the grounds in there i think it looks more specific and actually prettier on the eye for soap. All right, I'm gonna let these soaps set for several hours before I come in. Maybe I'll have them set overnight so that you can see the color change. In fact, let's do that. So I'm gonna wait 24 hours before I come in and bevel the edges and stamp, and you will see what 24 hours will do to this color. So take a note of this color, screenshot, and by the time I come back to do the stamping, you're gonna see a difference just 24 hours later. And I thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Look at that swirl. It's beautiful. Thank you again for joining me. It smells so good in the studio right now, like a barista's heaven. I'm loving this fragrance. I'm loving this soap. I appreciate you taking the time to watch, and I hope you have a wonderful day.